closing, this bill basically it lets the American people down. This is a missed opportunity for partnership, a chance to come together and pass a bill that addresses the real infrastructure needs of all of our communities, from the largest cities right down to our most rural areas. Members on the other side have said that they don't want another traditional highway bill, but we can't abandon our roads and bridges just to say we want something new. Our core infrastructure has become traditional because Americans depend on it to work and to, to travel and to live. And that's why every highway bill that has become law for the last, for at least the last three decades, has done so based on bipartisanship. Democrats and Republicans sitting down together with their priorities and putting, putting in the work to find common ground that both sides can support. We could have found common ground and achieved many of the goals while addressing Republican priorities as well. That's what the American people want us to do, and that's what the President at least said that he wanted, and that's what the Speaker actually said she wanted our committees to do. But the process that led us here didn't reflect any of those calls to unity. What's even more frustrating is that we did have a bipartisan agreement in place, at least part of it, ready to take up again, and that was the wastewater section of this bill. But the majority, again, blatantly rejected the chance to work together on another infrastructure issue that has been and should continue to be bipartisan. This bill only reflects the majority's one-size-fits-all version for what they think our infrastructure should look like. It doesn't reflect the realities of what actually addresses the needs of our communities. So today I'm going to ask my colleagues to consider this. Does this help your communities? Do you consider art to be infrastructure? Do you feel good about spending $550 billion on a highway bill that restricts communities from building highways? And most importantly, can you ignore the reality of spending more than $715 billion with no pay-fors, no pay-fors, no revenue title, just piling more debt onto our children's future and driving up inflation? For me, that answer is real simple. It's no. What's worse, progressives are not going to let this bill or any real infrastructure bill become law unless they get their $6 trillion partisan wish list. They're holding infrastructure hostage to achieve their socialist tax and spend agenda. Madam Speaker, I would urge my colleagues to oppose this bill and the majority's partisan process, and with that, I yield back.